Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn how to use and create measurements. We can find our measuring tools by going to the Tools dropdown and then mousing over Measure. And here's the full list of different measuring functions that we have. We can set our scale here, and this function is very similar to going to our measurements panel and then seeing the Add Scale to More Pages button right here. If we don't know the scale of our drawing, we can also use Calibrate. All we need is one existing known dimension on the file. So we can see that we have this 30 foot dimension right here. I'm going to use Calibrate now before we talk about preset scales. So I need to select two points of a known dimension to calibrate. That's fine. We're going to zoom in on this intersection and wait until the snap basically fills in the circle. So right there is perfectly in that intersection. Then we can go over here to this intersection. There it is. So what review is doing now in this new dialog is it's highlighting this number right here in this box. And this is very important because we need to change this number in order to get some math done. So we know that the measurement that we just measured was 30 feet. So that is the number that needs to be typed in this box right here. Now, our selection isn't solidified yet. In order to do that, we have a few ways to do it. I'm just going to click on this drop down and then click on it again. And you can see that the dash zero inches is now in place. And so now this is solidified. So we now know that 3.75 inches equals 30 feet. If we do some math and divide 30 feet by itself, we'll get one foot. And therefore, 3.75 divided by 30 will equal 0.125, or if we go to our presets, 1 eighth of an inch equals one foot. So we can basically check our scale by using this little mathematics right here and making sure that we input the correct number here. The fact that it showed one foot before isn't quite correct. We actually need to do that math on the left side over here in order to make it correct. So that's why review highlights this number right here. Then in this dialog, we can see precision. Precision is also in the measurements panel right here. So this can be changed at any time. And what this means is the amount of decimals that are going to come after a measurement will be calculated based on this. So basically, 1 16th is about four decimal places, et cetera, et cetera. So one is a whole number, and that means it's going to round the number to the nearest whole number. I wouldn't use that because it means that your measurements may not be 100% accurate. So having it set to 1 8th or 1 16th is usually much, much more accurate. Then we can choose which pages we need to set our scale with with this drop down right up here. So I could do it just for the current page or for all of my pages in my drawing. So that's how Calibrate would work if you need to use it. And we do have that preset drop down just like we saw earlier. So we can always change our scale whenever we need to for the entire drawing. And we have a custom tab right here that also allows us to set a custom scale. After setting our scale in review, we can now use measurement tools. We can do this by going to the tools drop down, mousing over measure, of course, and we can use length. Or in our measuring panel, we can see this list of tools and their icons right here. A third place to use them is if we have that shortcut activated. So you can right click next to an existing group of shortcuts and you can go to measure right here. And that's going to turn on all of these tools that have a little purple grid on the upper left side of the tool. So you'll see that if I turn that off, they disappear. And if I turn it on, they reappear again. Now we can use the length measuring tool. Let's go to tools, measure and click on length. And this one works very similarly to calibrating. We just need to pick two points and then we have our length. Now, when these tools are turned on, you can see that I still have that little square with grips that can snap to different parts of the quadrants of a circle, midpoint of a line, the end point of a line and intersections. And this can be turned on by turning on snap to content so that we can snap to vector data objects on our drawing. We can also turn on snap to markup. So if we created a markup and we want to measure something on it to verify, we can turn that on and we can snap from this markup right here to this one. And this now confirms that we're using height in this length sense, so to speak. And so this is 22 feet, eight inches, just like the height is of this concrete area. So it's not really the height in terms of depth. The depth of this concrete area is only six inches. So. That's basically how that works. And this is our length tool. So now that we've created this tool, we can now modify this measuring tool to make it look a bit more standard. So I'm actually going to make a new one because I just want to make it horizontal in this instance. And we're going to make it between grid lines four and five. Now, what we can do is we can click on this tool and now we can essentially click and hold anywhere on it and we can drag it up. 
Now this essentially moves the tool if we click on text right here, for example, and if we click on the line like this. Now if we wanted to drag it up and maintain its original two points, we can just click on this circle in the middle right here above the text, and we can now drag up and we can see that those points have maintained their location. So we've just stretched the measuring tool away, basically. Now, another thing that we can do is we can move the text above the line to make this tool more standard. So I can hold down the Shift key, click on the number 30 feet, and now it's moving independently from the tool itself. So I'm holding Shift in order to do this. Then I can let go, and we'll see that we have this leader line that's trying to attach or connect the text to the length dimension itself. Let's get rid of that. We can do that by going to the Properties panel right here. And then we can scroll down until we see Show Caption and Show Caption Leader Line. This is a leader line for the caption, so we're going to turn that off. And now that leader line is gone. We can move the text even closer just by holding Shift and clicking on the text. And now we have a dimension that looks a bit more standard. Another thing that I did was is I changed my default tool. So you can right-click on any measuring tool just like with a markup. And you can click on set as default and you can add measuring tools to the tool chest. So here are some of my measuring tools. We can see that I've made them the color magenta so I can keep track of them. And I could have a separate tool chest for them, but instead I've decided to keep them in my general tool chest. Now I can click on this measurement and you can see that I changed the arrow heads from the filled in arrow to this second arrow right up here. And there's many different options in properties. So measuring tools are similar to markups in this way. We can modify their properties, such as the color of the actual line, the font color of the text, etc., etc. So there's many different ways that we can customize our measuring tools. Let's look at some more measuring tools. So we'll go back to tools and measure. And we have poly lengths, which are very similar to lengths, except that they have multiple segments. And areas. Area is one of my favorite tools. So let's use that right now because we can essentially attribute lots of different data to this very flexible markup. So first of all, I'm going to turn off Snap to Markup so that we don't have all of those grid lines and guidelines appearing on our screen. Let's now make a nice area box. So we can make it about that big. And we can see that there's already some information about this area. Now I've saved it so that the label itself for the area is turned on in our properties area. So we can go to our little gear wheel here and then scroll down and we can see show caption and we can click on edit. So label is turned on and then I saved my markup to my default so it's now basically found whenever I use the normal area tool. I can also turn on different kinds of information for the area. For example, the length itself is actually the perimeter of the area and we can confirm this by turning width and height on and we can essentially do the math with width and height and get the overall length. So that's how length works in this program. Let's go to some more captions. If we have a depth associated with the area, we can turn on volume. Now I don't, so when I turn on volume and depth, they don't appear on the screen because their value is set to zero right now. So there is no depth yet. Then there's also wall area. This also relates to depth because depth, you could say, is another way of saying height in this program, while height is kind of the length, and the length should be called the perimeter. <laughs> so that's some ways to translate these labels into real-world data points. Now, let's go to our measuring panel, and we can scroll down, and we can see that depth is right here. So we can change that. First, I'm going to change my units to inches, and then I'm going to change my depth to six. Now, notice that I haven't solidified my data yet, so I need to click inside of another box. And now you can see that all of that information is now showing because the depth has now been solidified in our selection. So we can see that our depth is now six inches, which is roughly the thickness of most concrete. And we can see that our wall area is here, along with volume. It's all being calculated accordingly. And so that's how we can basically turn on a lot of different data points for the area tool. And we can do this for a lot of measuring tools. Let's look at some more measurements. So we'll go back to tools and measure. And the perimeter one is very similar to area and polylength. Polylength and perimeter can essentially have different kinds of captions that we can turn on in properties. So we're not going to demonstrate those right now. Diameter and radius also work similarly. So we can just essentially get those diameters and radius measurements whenever we need to. There's also three point radius, angle. Volume is also very similar to area, but it automatically will show the volume. However, if there's no depth assigned with the markup, it's just going to say zero cubic feet. So firstly, we'll need to reselect this, go back into properties and 
click on edit right here and you can see that we can turn on basically the same information that we could turn on for area so volume and area are almost interchangeable in terms of the information that you can share between them then just like i did earlier i can go to depth change this to 12 inches for example and now this volume is 744 cubic feet if i change this to six inches and then click inside of this box here now we're at half of that cubic feet so that's essentially how we can use the volume tool. Let's go back to tools and measure. And we have the polygon cutouts, the ellipse cutout, and the count tool. Now, using the count tool in this method is the manual way of using it. So I can essentially just use the count tool by placing check marks over certain objects. So if I wanted to quantify the amount of sinks that I have in this drawing, I can just simply place check marks on them if I know where they are. But what if I don't know where the sinks are? Well, this is where we can use visual search, which I've done a tutorial for already, and we can essentially get these check marks on top of certain objects that we use visual search for immediately. So you guys can look at my visual search tutorial to learn more about how we can use the count tool with visual search. One last tool in our list of measuring tools is dynamic fill, and I'll be making a tutorial for this tool in particular, along with a tutorial for our sketch to scale tools and in the measurements panel, we can see that there's viewports at the bottom down here, and we can manage these in this panel. We'll also talk about the untitled viewport error that will occur when layouts and viewports and sheets from other programs like AutoCAD and Revit are now opened as PDFs and they retain their data in review. And review will actually use them to determine the scale of your drawing. So we'll be covering viewports in a separate tutorial as well. Thank you very much for watching our tutorial on measurements in Bluebeam Review. Once again, my name is Ari and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Hope you have a great rest of your day.